Hi, my name is Vivian Laughlin. I'm a PhD candidate at the Institute of Archaeology at Andrews University. Today I'm doing a poster on the utilization of Serapis during 30 BC and 230 AD within Roman elite houses in Italy. This began with Ptolemy, who was a Macedonian general for Alexander the Great that later became an Egyptian ruler of, of Egypt and created the Serapis cult. This cult combined Greek and Egyptian religion and philosophy, acquisitioned Osiris and Apis as supreme gods, and finally applied Greek imagery, as we see here, um, and created the Greco-Egyptian Serapis cult. Serapis purported itself to be greater than any other god. It was strategically planned as a political ploy that made Ptolemy a deified god in his sixth reigning year, unified upper, middle, and lower Egypt, as well as unified uh, Greece and Egypt, um, along, the, along with the subcultures of the micro regions, making it possible to rule and trade in harmony. The waters, as we see here around Egypt, represent mystical powers that became passageways, bringing cultures together with the combined interests of supplies and with Serapis, now religion. Since Serapis was created to be cosmopolitan, trade inadvertently became a tool to help expand it. After the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, Octavian took the Hellenistic Egyptian Serapis cult, intertwined Roman gods and their philosophies with that of the existing Greek and Egyptian, but replaced the previous supreme gods of Osiris and Apis with Isis and reinvented Serapis. Rome's Serapis cult benefited Octavian in multiple ways. It created an illusion of solidarity within the Egyptian peoples by maintaining their history, cultures, and practices, assigned Isis as supreme god, and made it seem appeasing to the people since Cleopatra purported herself as the new Isis. However, the utilization of Isis was a placating measure to legally utilize the cult of Magna Marta, the great mother, as a more prominent figure in Roman society. While the Magna Marta was a practicing cult since 205 BC, it was done so in secret in Rome. Isis in Serapis was also tr uh, transported abroad into all of the Near Eastern regions by Augustus. And afterwards, it created a situation where the cult if you worship any god that fell under its conglomeration of gods, you also inadvertently worship the imperial cult. Here we see evidence of this by the frieze, which is a depiction of Rhea headed on a sphinx. And to the right, we see Serapis, who is also <laughs> headed on a sphinx. They're both worshiping and embodying Isis, who is now the supreme god of Serapis. Down here below, we see a foot, which is the remains of a ginormous statue that was created by D Domitian. This foot is now housed in the center of Rome. Here we have a Serapis, which is a personification of a river god with his children. Um, this was built sometime during the first century AT. It's AD. I'm sorry. It's located at the Capitoline Museum. We have various coins. At the top here, we have Antonius Pius, who his, his head depicted on one side, but then also Serapis depicted on the other. The second coin is a Roman coin with Nero on one side and Serapis on the other. Here at Hadrian's Villa, we have depicted on the right the Canopus, which is clearly Egyptian from the body of water that represents the Nile, and it fuses in the Hellenistic Egyptian with the Greek and the Egyptian cultures, as we see here with this, as well as the uh, Serapium in the back, which is made architecturally to mimic that of the exact same Serapium in Alexandria, Egypt. Here we have a statue of Isis, which came came from the Pachile, located in the front center area of Hadrian's Villa as soon as you walk in. This is now housed at the Vatican. That's it for my poster presentation. If you want to know more about my research and what's going on next with me, please feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Vivian Laughlin, as well as my webpage, VivianLaughlin.com. Thank you.